Now, the dark side or the perverse manifestation, because every symbol, every planetary influence you see has a positive and a negative side. Its perverse manifestation is in the unhealthy obsessions with death, perverse sex, and with breaking taboos, etc. The media is co-opting this and is already serving this aspect. Those forensic shows, right? Digging up corpses, CSI, looking beneath the surface, you see, wondering how things tick, in, uh, infatuation with the body and its biology and corpses and rotting stuff. Something wrong with it. It's part of a plutonic archetype. Those uh, reality shows and TV shows, they're co-opting it. They're ahead of us, you see. They know what's coming. And they're warming us up with the new mythography. But basically, Pluto draws attention to all the unhealthy aspects of life, psychologically and socially. It brings up evil and drags down the masks and opposes false icons and gods. All that exposure that's happening with Michael Jackson and Martha Stewart and whatnot. Why do you think that's happening? Because the masks are coming down. And it's going to shock both the antagonists and the protagonists. I assume you're protagonists. Well, I'm here to tell you that you better know what's going to be happening to those you have intimate connections with and intimate relationships and so on. This opening is greatly disturbing to the ego that will rather self-destruct than face its own shadows. Right? The ego is threatened by this. Pluto is the planetary ruler of what we call the underworld cycle. In the tarot, its card is number 13, death. And its action is catabolic. It breaks down. And the first thing that you're going to feel it breaking down is your relationships. That's where it hits the hardest. Pluto is connected to the alchemical wedding, what the alchemists call the chemical wedding. But what we don't read in all these flowery books about the chemical wedding is that one cannot achieve this elusive thing, the chemical wedding, without first experiencing a chemical divorce. One cannot attain the truth without first confronting and removing all that is false from the self. This action ruled by Pluto, and in mythology we have Shiva, Durga, Kali, and Merlin, etc., representing that aspect, is deeply threatening to the ego of man, which wants to hold on to the status quo. Pluto, the dissolver, is closely associated with Uranus, the planet archetype of freedom, individuality, and rebellion. You know, the punk era and a lot of the countercultural bands and movements that have been happening since the 60s, that's ruled by Pluto and Uranus to expose corruption and, and show people how to be free and break the Saturnian patterns. Pluto and Uranus are already working to dissolve the common dependency-based relationships that men and women crave and which keep them estranged from selfhood and deep psychological maturation. Pluto is nature's hygienist, her psychic surgeon, which enters to rid us of all that is toxic, calcified, false, and unsustainable. It has to do this, because we've been taking for granted too many things. You know when the safety net is removed from beneath uh, your feet as you cross the tightrope? How reverently you now walk that tightrope that you took. <laughs> How reverently every step is taken. That's what's happening. The, the ladders are being pulled up on the middle class right now. Pluto in ancient world was actually Shiva. There's no difference. But what you haven't been told is that Shiva equals the Holy Spirit. My work goes into this. That they have their trinity of Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, right? God, Son, Holy Spirit. Well, Shiva is the part that corresponds in the Hindu trinity to the Holy Spirit. So it's coming in, ladies and gentlemen, is not Pluto, some archetype, some planet you needn't worry about. There is a connection here to something incredibly important. Now man's psyche is unclean. Everything is cleaned but not the human psyche. Man's relationships of the old Piscean Saturnian type are chronically dependency based. We are emotional and psychological prostitutes. Totally living on the surface of ourselves, projecting our own dark content externally onto others and enslaving others to our needs and desires. And then we call this love. But it is the dark secret love of the poets and has nothing to do with freedom and advancement. The, the physical kind of prostitution, not small potatoes. We are inherently dependent on others. I, I need you, you need me. We call that relationship today. We're living on the surface of ourselves, in the persona world, in the ego world. And all the dislikes that we have about ourselves and other people, we repress, as the psychologists have warned us. And it becomes the shadow. Well, Pluto is connected to the shadow. We don't need psychologists to tell us, though, that we have a Jekyll and a Hyde. And we have this personal shadow that we often project onto other people. The dark aspects of the personal psyche, which threaten the ego's autonomy, are repressed. They are also subconsciously projected onto others who become external representatives of our shadow self. This projection occurs as a compensation for the inner psychic tension we feel as a result of that repression. 
In severe cases, we also process this content through the field of others. And then there's also the collective psyche and its dark content, which is likewise projected. Right? You have your individual shadow. The world has its shadow that event sometimes through history gets projected on others. What do we get when we don't cleanse the inner being then? Given that we do not do this shadow work, what is it that we get when we do not do it? Well, the masses of men and women in the Western world compulsively avoid true, authentic, psychoanalytical investigation of their natures, particularly in regards to the so-called darker aspects of the personality. However, not dealing with the psyche at all proves systemically hazardous. Right? A compromise is required. Hence, the proliferation of the New Age philosophy and movement together with its many permutations. Riddled with ego-customized shams and gimmicks, the application of its methods serve for the most part to merely bolster the failing ego and its drives. Being that dark and toxic within, we gave rise to the sadism of our world and the masochism and the ecocide that it comes about in our world as the uh, manifestation of rape and murder and cruelty towards others. But I am interested in cruelty towards others, yes. But I'm more interested in how we are cruel to ourselves. I'm not smart enough. We're not attractive enough. We're not tall enough. We're not thin enough. We're not rich enough. We're not social or active enough. We're not witty enough. I'm not still enough. I can't control my mind. I'm not in control enough. I, you know, I'm not caring and I'm not giving enough. I'm not holy enough. I'm not perfect enough. Have you, we observe in this world, granted, we've got pretty good you know, at knowing and defining the cruelty to others. Thank God. We are extremely backward in noticing how we're just cruel to ourselves. Let's start observing that. Because if you're sadistic towards the self, which they call masochism, but it's really sadism to the self, you're inherently going to be sadistic to others. And we have this illusion of normal normalcy. When we say we desire to live in a peaceful, harmonious world and see beauty all around us, what we often really mean is that we wish we could edit out from our view that ugliness we don't want to see, and which disturbs our ego's image of perfection. We do anything to anesthetize ourselves from the pain of the real. So living in harmony doesn't mean not looking at the dirt. We all want to live forever, but no one wants to age. We want to know everything, but we don't want to open our minds. We want to avoid pain, but never find out why pain arises in our life. We all want freedom, but don't know what to do with it when we get it. Or we abuse it when we have it. We all want the light, but we're afraid of facing the dirt that the light might reveal. There's a couple of different actions that light has, don't forget. We want others to fill us, but we can't fill ourselves or another. We want to see reality as it really is, but don't want to see ourselves as we really are. As Vernon Howard, the great American philosopher, said, human sickness is so severe that few can bear to look at it, but those who do will become well. That requires a certain kind of courage, the courage you're all going to need in the next lot of years. Not to look out and worry about tyrants on Capitol Hill, but the tyrant within, the syzygy, the schizoid nature of your inner republic. Are all the knights sitting at your round table within? If they're not, then don't tell me about politics, and don't try to fix the outer ambiance. <laughs>